All right, that's right. We're taking a look at the Garmin Approach R10 today. We're going to look at it as a launch monitor. We're going to do some uh, range work. We're going to do this all indoors. We're going to do an indoors test here. Uh, and we're also going to be doing a little bit of a golf simulator because that means when you talk indoors, you're talking sim, yes, right? Absolutely. So a lot of people want to use this as a simulator. So we're going to see how viable it is to do that. We're even going to hook it up to our projector and create more of a sim experience out of it. Uh, and one thing that I find so amazing with this, one thing that not a lot of simulators can boast is 42,000 golf courses. Get out. Yes, including our local course. Ooh, okay. I have loaded up here for you. What do we got? Spook Rock. Nice. <laughs> a course we've played here on the channel in real life before. So we're going to see how close that matches reality. But first things first, this is not a sponsored video, but I will say that Garmin did send us a unit to test. However, however, they have no say over the video and they're not going to be watching this before it comes out. We're going to be giving you guys our full thoughts, our pluses, minuses, what we like, what we don't like about this unit. Uh, and we're gonna be running through using it, like I said, and taking some actual swings. But first, Mike, we gotta talk about it itself. Yeah. I know one thing you like about it is how portable it's It's so been. portable, it's small, it fits in the bag. That's what you wanna see. Yep. You know, if you're fortunate enough to spend 20,000 on a track, man, it's still a big piece of equipment. Yeah, you're not carrying that around. You're not really carrying that around. This fits in the bag. We've had it for a couple months now um, and we've been using it. Yeah, it's really not much bigger than a rangefinder in a rangefinder case true. would be. Yep. So it is something that you can bring to the range as a launch monitor. Uh, again, we're going to be testing it from an indoor standpoint, but let's let's start talking about that as far as an accuracy standpoint, because you're going to have two different levels of accuracy with the R10, indoors and outdoors. And the reason for that is because of what it can measure. One thing that I'll say is when you'll see when we get it set up here in the sim, um, you do need a minimum amount of space. So taking it straight from the, the manual from Garmin, you need to have six feet behind you okay. and at least eight feet of distance that that ball is going to travel in order for it to pick up any type of reading. So anyone's standard garage would work. Pretty much. But if you're super confined on space, and if you are, make sure you check out uh, our video recently yes. on the world's smallest golf simulator, If you, which you hit in a bath. Yes, that might be the answer to your prayers. Right, so if you need something super compact, you got that. But as long as you've got that six feet behind you and eight feet in front of you, this thing is going to be able to take a reading. However, it does read things a little bit differently, whether you're indoors or outdoors. So first, this is all directly from the manufacturer, uh, what they say is measured, and this is by radar. Club head speed, they say is measured within plus or three miles per hour okay. accuracy. Ball speed, plus or minus one mile an hour. Uh, launch angle accuracy, plus or minus one degree. And launch direction accuracy, plus or minus one degree. And that, I think, is what makes me the most excited about a unit like this. Yeah. That is fairly accurate it is. for something that costs around 600, 600 bucks. 600 bucks. 600 bucks. Now, there are certain things that it's going to calculate by the algorithm, which is a fancy way of saying it's a very educated guess. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some readings. It's just trying to guess some things. One would be club face angle. They say that's accurate within two degrees. Apex height, plus or minus five feet. And carry distance, plus or minus five yards. All of those are going to be calculated by the algorithm. But what's good about this algorithm being something that's based on software, as they roll out updates, mm -hmm. it's going to get more and more accurate. Now, this is a unit that's been out already about six months, and it's already had some updates applied to it that have made it a bit more accurate. Um, but we're talking indoors here. So one thing I will say is spin. Spin is a number that's very important, especially uh, whether you're practicing, whether you're fitting your golf equipment, whatever it may be, you want to make sure you have accurate spin. If you're indoors, it's not measuring that spin. Okay. It is going to be calculating it based on what they say, a machine learned model that uses measured radar metrics. So the ones that we mentioned earlier that it's measuring, it's using those to extrapolate out what the spin is going to be. So it's a little bit of guesswork if you're using it indoors. So we're doing an indoor review today. We won't see that, but if we take this outside, you will. Now, if you're outdoors, that's where you would see measured spin in some conditions. That's the okay. other thing. It's gotta be, there's, there's obviously gonna be different conditions, different weather, mm -hmm. where it has to be able to pick up that ball. So it's going to do one of two things. It's gonna do either observed ball trajectory. That means the radar is actually measuring the spin okay. or it's going to to fall back on that al algorithm. And one thing it says here is that spin is not measured for balls going slower than 90 miles an hour. And spin is not measured when the ball is seen for less than 20 meters. 
So okay. you think about it, if you're on the range, if there's anything obstructing that, it could mm -hmm. be the contrast of the sky, whatever it may be, you're not gonna get a measured spin. However, beyond that, it is measuring your spin. So again, it's something that's promising for the price point and the size, given the fact that only a few years ago, there was no way you were getting these measurements from a launch monitor without paying astronomical fees. Yeah, interesting, you're right. Yeah. Well, right now you got me at 600 bucks, you can practice with it and you can play in a golf sim on it. Exactly. So it's in other ways, you have to really think if you're not going to get, you have to be real, you're not gonna get trackman level accuracy out of a device that costs a 20th of it and is and is much smaller. Mm -hmm. You have to think what we're doing here is making it as accurate as possible given the size. But the size is one of the biggest selling points and the price because as I said, portable and affordable. But let's really quickly talk before we go hit it, let's quickly talk about what you get with the Garmin app. Yes. Okay, so with the app, you have the driving range, which is on there, which is whether you use it indoor or outdoors, you're able to get all those launch monitor numbers that you want. Again, accuracy is a nuanced thing here. We'll get into it, but at least you'll know that's what you get with that. But beyond that, there's something called Home T Hero. Okay. And I think Garmin did a very smart thing with this because they already do a lot of GPS devices and have a lot of golf courses mapped. Mm -hmm. They basically took all of those mapped golf courses and made them into a simulator type experience. It's a crap, 42,000. 42,000. So if your course is mapped, there's a very good chance it's here and you can play it from a, as a simulator. Now, the graphics are not stellar. It's kind of similar to what you would see in like a GPS overlay map, like the, the Garmin does with some of its watches and things like that. Got it. However, you still are getting your yardages, your, you'll, you'll recognize your holes, and there'll be that familiarity, mm -hmm. and you can play that. There's also multiplayer options. You can play with your buddies if they have some. Um, is, there a, is there a monthly fee? But that's, the, that's kind of the catch. So now you've laid out your roughly $600 for this. If you want these additional features, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to spend an additional either $9.99 a month or $100 a year. It's like your nine, standard nine, monthly year. subscription. Exactly, so that subscription to that Garmin app is what's gonna unlock okay. all that. There are some other things, like there's tournaments, there's some uh, more like multiplayer play that you can get involved with. And the last thing, which we're not gonna test today, but, but this will be for people who want a little bit more of that visually stimulating simulator mm. experience, you can connect this to E6, True Golf E6. Okay. So with that, often there are ones where it comes with a couple of free courses, or again, if you'd rather spend your membership money there, there's a membership that unlocks many more courses. And we tried that, uh, we tried E6 before. We have, and, yeah. And our other things yeah. on the channel, so you can check those out. But th this becomes your input source for your E6, and then you're able to play there. The setup yeah. looks pretty easy. Setup is one of my favorite things. There's a magnet on the back, it just snaps down, and there it is. And you you don't need an, we're gonna use our iPad today, you don't need that, you can just connect it to any so smartphone. You, so you can use your phone, I guess that's why they give you this clip. They do, yeah, exactly. So you're able to, it's for guys who just wanna be on the range and they wanna oh, have a I simplified see. launch monitor that you can just throw down. Uh, it's, it's smart that it's got this little red alignment that makes sure that you're aligned because also when we say accuracy, Mm -hmm. It can only be accurate if it's used properly. Of course. Level surface, aligned, things like that. It does give you some guidelines in the app, but having that visual of having that line that you can see where it is, where it's lined up with, really helps. But it's very quick, easy to set up. You throw it down at the range and you're using it. I think that people who are looking for an entry level, low cost launch monitor are going to love this for that reason. Yeah, it's the simple things like the red line. It's the simple things. So, with that being said, let's go get it set up. Let's hit a couple on the range and then we'll go out and we'll play a golf simulated experience and give you some feedback on how accurate we feel that it is. Let's go. All right, so setup didn't seem too tough. One of my favorite parts is that this is basically your setup. Ready? Done. <laughs> if you were on the range, on the golf course, it's as easy as just setting this unit about six feet behind you. Here, talk about those measurements. We've got six feet behind us. We've got more than the eight feet to our screen. We've got about 10 feet. And we have this connected to our um, iPad here, which by the way, if you are looking to create a simulator type experience at home, something as cheap as a HDMI cable, there's an HDMI converter for iPad or for your, whatever your smart device is, you just get the right one. You can then use that HDMI to connect this to a t television or a projector. And now you've created a simulator relatively inexpensively, as long as you have something to hit into. One thing I don't like 
is in this app, it only kind of stays in that portrait mode. So it doesn't really fill up the screen, but at least you can see what I mean here while we're on the range. So we set up, we're on the range. This is one of the free things that comes with the app. You don't need any additional subscription. And this is just to be used as a launch monitor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a club that I hit all the time, eight iron. It's usually my 150 yard club. We're gonna tell it we're hitting an eight iron. We're gonna see how accurate it is. And now, as you can see, we've got that red line which is a terrific visual cue facing right down that target line to make sure that this thing's aligned properly. There we go. What did I say, Mike? What was my number? Yeah, that was it right there, 150. 150. Look at that. Wow, all right. So we get a lot out of this. So here we've got, and again, there is, as we talked about earlier, some of this is gonna be by the algorithm, some of this is gonna be measured, but you've got your distances right off the bat, 150, that's how I hit this club. I can feel like that's fairly accurate. Went about two uh, yards right, it was fairly straight. And then if you slide over, you can see that you get a lot of numbers oh, here, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So there's some of these, that's why I mentioned earlier in the video, some of this is measured, some of this is calculated, and that algorithm I'm sure will continue to improve over time. Keep in mind for the price and for the size, these are not numbers that I would live and die by, especially spin numbers but I feel like it's gonna be close enough for your average golfer to get those metrics that they want in their game, especially if they're working on improving something. But I know what everyone wants to see, and that is getting out on the golf course. So what do you say we get that set up? What do you wanna play, a quick hole maybe? Let's go. Okay. Right, let's go. A lot of simulators come with maybe anywhere five, 10, 15 different courses, where here you can play any course, just about 42,000 courses. So if there's a course you're gonna be playing maybe in a tournament, you wanna get a quick preview, or if it's a course that you're, you're used to playing, it's your weekend course, and you wanna do some work on different shots there, you can actually pull that course up. Mike, so I've pulled up Spook Rock Golf Course, which is just down the road. I'm gonna add you in, oh, so we can easy. do up to four okay. players, very simple. We're gonna play from the blue tees. Yep. You can wow. set Worst your wind conditions. conditions. And then one thing here is because of its limitations, it's not gonna do putting. Once you're on the green, it's giving you estimated putts. So you're, you're not gonna be doing any putting with this simulator. And also because of those really short shots, those chip shots can also not be super accurate with this launch monitor. Again, it's not gonna be able to measure everything. You can also basically turn off chipping as well. So as soon as you get around the green, it's gonna give you an estimated score for chip shots and putts. Well, we're gonna leave it on. Let's right? leave it on. Okay. Let's start playing. So here we go. And Micah, hopefully you'll recognize this first The dog leg left, that I know. A hard one, it looks just like it. But look, it's telling you to hit a 230 club, because just like in real life, I always hit a hybrid on this hole. You do? Yep. Okay, so then let's, uh, let's hit hybrid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's a hybrid shot for you, and man. As I say, um, hybrid that's... is usually a 205, 215 <laughs> club for me. So, so far, I'm impressed with the accuracy. All right, I'm gunning for you now. You're up. I might go driver. <laughs> driver? Oh, yeah. Why not? Let's see how accurate the Let's driver see. is. There are times I do try to take it over the tree here. Okay, he's cutting corners. Oh, I hit a tree. Oh, I hit a tree. Flip the tree. <laughs> So now you're in the rough. We're about the same distance. Yeah, out. I've been there. I've been there. Okay, so all right, this is cool. I, I can get into this. Yeah. So we've got what here? We've got a one. One sixty-eight. No tree shot. trouble. See the power though, minus ten, which means that they are taking into consideration some rough. I'm gonna hit a six iron here. Now, usually a six iron is like a one seventy-five club for me. Let's see if that. So let's see how much this rough takes off of it. Good contact. He's, get up there. He's going. Get up. Nice shot. Ooh, just off the green. So you're up. You've got a, almost the same distance it's from the, the same rough. thing. Okay. Oh, I got a little bit. Let's see a good miss hit. Oh. <laughs> well. You know what though? I was curious to see what how they would pick up a miss hit, and that's exactly where that ball would have went. Let's say short and left. Just... Accuracy is pretty good on this thing. I, I was gonna say, you said it as soon as you hit it that you miss hit it, and it did pick it up that way. Right. Left and low. We're gonna try those short shots you were talking about. Okay, so you got an 84 yard shot here. Nice clean contact there. Yeah, I like that. Fly ball, fly. Look at that, look at that. Get on that green, Woo! there you go. 
In the ring, what does that mean? That means we're good. That means you're on the green. It gives you two, two putts shots. from there. Okay. I probably would have two putt that. There you go. All right. So you see what I mean? There's no putting. However, depending on how close you get to the uh, the pin itself is whether it's going to give you a two putt or a one putt. Now, here's a spot where I'm going to try the chipping. Uh, it's just a little 15 yard shot. So we'll see how it registers. This is something that, again, we could have turned off and it would have given me an estimated chip, but let's try it. All right, the 15 yard chip shot. Yeah, so this is gonna be really delicate. Obviously, there's almost no real flight time for it to register. So yep. I wouldn't expect this to be super, super accurate, but let's see. Just a little 15 yard chip. I see the 15 yarder. Did it even register? It did? It did. All right, so you didn't give it enough. Yards. Six yard chip, it said, which it could be. I mean, you're only talking about uh, about 10 feet here yeah. to the to the screen. So and look at that. We push. There you go. We push the hole. All right. So that was a quick use case to show you what the R10 is capable of. And for 600 bucks, I'm impressed with it. Although it's not going to be as accurate and you're, you're fooling yourself if you think you're going to get trackman level accuracy, a two hundred, a twenty thousand dollar device accuracy out of a much physically smaller and less expensive device. But if you're happy with that, as we talked about before, plus or minus five yards here and there, maybe occasionally picking up a shot a little bit off, if you're willing to give up a little bit of that to unlock what we see here, which is all of this, that range capability, the indoor and outdoor capability, and the ability to basically snap together an indoor simulator and play 42,000 golf courses, then I think this is something that you absolutely have to give a look to. Remember, there is that $100 a year subscription fee for this, but I'll tell you what, if I've got one of these, I'm paying the extra $100 so that I can unlock all of those golf courses. So I think it's a terrific unit. I think it's a unit that's only going to get better as they improve that software, being able to use those calculations of what is measured. And I'm really impressed. And I think it's a great visual on the direction that the overall launch monitor industry is going, which is gonna be smaller, but more powerful and more affordable. Let us know what you guys think. Drop a comment below. What do you think? Would you spend $600 on this unit? If you have any questions, you can drop those in the comments below too. We'll try to answer as many of those as we can. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.